Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching B -b Boom, the political vigilante. Great way to support the show is do what Alex Talk has done and go to Rockfin, excuse me, patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, where you can submit articles like this. There's Alex Talk's name right there, folks. Ending the war in Afghanistan won't end inflated defense spending. This, I think, was in Jacobin. Yeah, I'm glad we're out of Afghanistan. Could have Biden handled the exit better? Of course. But the fact that the Republicans are saying he should have handled it better and Trump would have this and Biden would have that just is part of the distraction from the fact that two parties, four presidents from two parties in 20 years spent three and a half trillion dollars in 20 years and wasted lives um, to accomplish nothing to give the Taliban more of our weapons is basically what happened. The only two people that benefited from our 20 year involvement was the Taliban and the military industrial complex. So I was like, I didn't think the military was going to let Joe Biden do this because of all the money they spent. But this article is going to show there's new studies done saying that they're just going to keep the war machine. I mean, pulling out of Afghanistan is really going to do almost nothing to limit the gross egregious spending of the military industrial complex by the United States of America. While preparing to consider big cuts to the 3.5 trillion reconciliation bill, Congress is simultaneously advancing a defense spending plan that would pay out more than twice in the same time period. Wow. What do I say they do? Divide, distract, and keep people afraid. So everybody's divided on the vaccine mandates. We're all fighting about that. Great. Okay. So we're not looking at the environment collapsing and we're not looking at this. And then the reconciliation, the $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill, and the Republicans want this and the Democrats want that every day. And, you know, corporate Democrats, Kristen Siena and Joe Manchin are holding up the Democratic blah, 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 blah. Nice piece of theatrics, nice distraction from what's really going on. Everyone in Congress and the Senate is just giving the military more money. <laughs> Advancing a defense spending plan that would pay out more than twice in the same time period. The dichotomy spotlights how even after the war in Afghanistan concluded, the military industrial complex is poised for huge growth in the years to come. Huge growth. Military contractors and the business interests that track them expect to see major growth in the sector. War and destroying people's lives and killing people and PTSD and, you know, loss of limbs and destroying the land and unstable governments. That's a sector. That's how the military, it's a sector. Military is a sector. It's an investment sector. That's how out of touch and soulless these crazy people are. It's a sector. You know, 90% of, of the, the drones are, are unintended targets. That's part of the sector. Unintended targets is innocent civilians. How many innocent civilians did we kill in 20 years in Afghanistan? We, we call, oh, we, we love women so much. That's why we bomb the shit out of Afghani women for 20 years. Cause we're so about women's rights. Okay. And you'd think after 20 years and three and a half trillion dollars and thousands of American GIs and, and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of Afghani lives lost, boy, women would just have, it'd be great times. We would, we fixed it. Women are in parliament. There's a female prime minister and girls are going to school. And boy, the Afghani women's soccer team did so well in the last Olympics, right? We would see all of these things, these like clear, clear indicators that the money and time and lives spent in Afghanistan over the last two decade, decades really was worth it. No, we didn't get any of that. So just showing you, what do I say? Follow the money, connect the dots, get the truth. So while they're hemming and hawing on the news about this law, this infrastructure bill and this and that, and this is what's really going on. As corporate Democratic lawmakers threaten to kill the party's climate and health care spending bill, <laughs> the party is moving forward with a defense budget that puts the country on track to spend $8 trillion 
on national defense over the next decade. That's how much we've spent around total, about $8 trillion, maybe a little more. It's hard to say because we keep a lot of the military budget, the books off, we, it's off the books, we don't know. But we've spent roughly $8 trillion on the in the last 20 years on the global war on terror. We're going to spend that in less than a decade with this new plan. Again, $8 trillion. We can't have free health care because, gee, how are we going to pay for it? We got $8 trillion for these ridiculous endless wars and the bombing and the drone strikes and the military bases all over the planet. We've got money for that. You're not, are you getting rent relief? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Are you getting free college? Are you and your kids getting free college? No. This money right here could end homelessness, do student debt forgiveness, and free college and Medicare for all. But we're not going to get that. The expansion of private sector investment in the military industrial complex will have the effect of further privatizing violence and making the perpetuations of violence less accountable to democratic oversight. That's why we privatize everything. Private prisons, we don't, there's no, there's no congressional oversight. That's what, that's what the Congress and the Senate are supposed to do. They're supposed to be oversight. These elected officials that are representatives of the people, the constituents in their district, there's no oversight anymore. Are you kidding me? Private, private health, for-profit healthcare system. There's no oversight. They can charge whatever they want. That's why people are being, should be, we're in the middle of a pandemic. We should have free healthcare. We can't get it. I just, anytime you see somebody living in the streets, anytime you see a dilapidated school, park, any public place like that, library, your roads are shitty. Just think about the military industrial complex gets all of this money. And if they didn't, all of our lives would be better. I just want you on a daily, on your daily basis, wherever you go, your kids, did they cut some funding at your kid's school? Oh, well, we could have had that. You could have had a new computer learning center. We could have had a job. We could get the homeless off the streets. We could, everybody could have free public colleges and universities. But we're going to spend $8 trillion on the next 10 years. We've already spent eight, nine, 10, eight, nine, somewhere in there, trillion dollars on the global war on terror. Three and a half trillion was completely wasted in Afghanistan. A complete waste of goddamn money. Wasted. 22 vets a day commit suicide. Think about what this 8 trillion, we could actually, you know, we got a lot of homeless vets. We got a lot of vets struggling with PTSD. You serve this country, you come back, you should have a job, a home, everything squared away. Nah. Defense contractors can't make money off of that. They're going to say support the troops, but they don't give a shit. And why are they going to be, are they so excited about this? Global instability. The report opens by noting that the COVID-19 pandemic has increased global instability and global instability is good for the defense industry. Ooh. So they're happy that there's protests and mandates and People are mad about mandates and they're taken to the streets to go, oh, we'll send some more militarized cops to the streets for your protests. Yes, yes. Keep fighting with each other because then that mm, instability. Boy, climate change is probably good for this too. Climate change is causing instability, which means we're going to need more military. There's floods and fires and infrastructure breaks down and people are angry and oh boy, you know what else is good? You know, COVID 19's helped with uh, raising evictions. Ah, if people are pissed off that they're getting evicted, we might have some more instability. Well, that's good. For, that's good for business. So your misery is good for their profit margin. Just so we're all clear here. And this is part of the other report. Is we, this is another reason why we always need to have China and Russia as bad guys? Because what if? Uh, and our outspending them 
forces them to spend more, which is just good for the global defense contractor industry. As long as everyone's buying weapons, that's all they care about. The defense contractors in a war will fund both sides. They don't care. They're like bookies. They're like bookmakers, right? You bet on the Giants, you bet on the Dodgers. As long as we get the same amount of people betting, we'll make money. Report goes on to predict that by 2032, the combined defense spending of Russia and China will risk outpacing the UN's defense budget. Oh, I find that hard to believe, quite honestly, because if we were to cut our budget in half, our budget in half, it's currently three, $743 billion, I think. So if we were to cut that in half, be 300 some billion dollars, we would be still be outspending China by $200 billion. They're spending all this money on on uh, their military because they're surrounded. Russia and China are surrounded by American military bases. If we said we're going to stop spending this money on military and we're going to spend it on our people, infrastructure, and a Green New Deal, and hey, Russia and China, let's all lead the world, the three superpowers, let's all lead the world on reversing climate change so that the human race doesn't go extinct. They would do that. They would do that. But if you're, if, if America, the American empire, like imagine if there was Russian and Chinese bases in Mexico, in Canada, just the, tried to put missiles in Cuba back in the 1960s and we went nuts. Imagine, imagine if there was Chinese warships doing maneuvers in the Gulf of Mexico because China and had a bunch of military bases in Mexico. Can you imagine how we would react to that? Well, that's what we're doing to them. Just think about that. Just think about that. Imagine if the state of Hawaii, which is very remote, it's the most remote island chain in the world. It has you know, the island of Oahu has five military bases on it. Imagine if the Chinese or Russian Navy was constantly around, like just off the shore here. We do military exercises in the Sea of Japan, the South China Sea all the time. And then we act like, oh, we're just doing our jobs being the freedom police and the China so mean and bad. We provoke this shit. One of the reasons we provoke this shit is then they'll go buy more weapons and we go buy more weapons and then everyone's buying more weapons and who benefits the military industrial complex? Just like the gun lobby. The gun lobby wants every American to have a gun to feel safe and free and exercise their second amendment right. They don't care if there's a hundred shootings a day. There's a hundred gun deaths a day in America. School shootings, people just going into churches and restaurants, and you're not safe anywhere in America. At any moment, anywhere in America, anyone can just pull up with a gun and start shooting. Does that make you feel great? Does it make you feel free? Who benefits? The gun lobby. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. They're like, no, no, it's okay now. You can invest in these lethal systems because it's removed. It's remote killing. That's part of the other thing, pulling the boots on the ground out of countries because they've realized, boy, when these men and women come home uh, in flag draped coffins or with wounds or missing limbs or PTSD, that doesn't look good. So we can just drone strike and bomb the shit out of people. Then it's just like a video game. We can just destroy people's lives thousands of miles away and we don't care. We've bombed weddings recently in the Middle East. Look at Joe Biden. He bombed, he killed nine aid workers in Afghanistan in August. <laughs> Is he held accountable? Is anyone mad about that? No. Eh, what are we going to do? Couldn't be helped. Laser guided defenses. That's all nonsense. It's remote killing. It's drone systems. It's not necessarily a gun. It's more removed form of violence. That's why most Americans are numb to it. We don't care about what's happening in poor countries because we don't see it. We don't get drone striked. We don't get bombed. There's been some terrorist bombings, which were pretty awful, but we're not just getting bombed indiscriminately. When you're having a wedding, you're not worried that like 
you know, Iran or China or Mexico is just going to drone strike your wedding and innocent people are going to die and they're going to make it and go, Oh, well, there was terrorists in that building next to your wedding. Really? At the Ramada Inn where we had the wedding that we thought there was terrorists. Yeah. We had credible intelligence, credible Intel. We don't know what that fear is. There's no landmines in America. There's no bombing. Yet we just destroy people's lives all over the Middle East. Just destroy it. But we make it seem glamorous and glitzy and sexy. And how do we do it? Because the defense industry puts up videos like this and they play them on MSNBC. Look at this. This is exciting. This looks like technology, travel, video games, trains, broadband. Death from above. We see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two U.S. Navy vessels. Beautiful pictures at night. That's Brian Williams. This is when uh, Trump first bombed Syria in April of 2017. Fareed Zakaria said Trump became president today. These beautiful rockets. No mention of who they're killing. Innocent people dying. Kids, moms, dads, just somebody, just working class people getting the shit blown out of them. Imagine if this went to like, I don't know, Flint, Michigan, Tupelo, Mississippi, just working class people out there. Boom. Just blew them out of the, just blew them out of the sky. And you saw a reporter from another country going, look at those rockets, how beautiful they are. This is how removed we are from war. And it makes it more palatable so the American people don't aren't aware and don't really care that $8 trillion of their money is being spent to, for this kind of crap that could be helping Americans, but it's not even going to help Americans. It's not even, it's not even like it's going to help people. It's, it's like, wow, we're spending $8 trillion to build roads and schools and, and bridges in the Middle East. Okay, at least we're helping somebody. No, no, we're spending money to blow the shit out of poor people that didn't do it. 90% of them didn't do a goddamn thing to us. All we do is destabilize governments in the region, and we're not benefiting from it as well. But Brian Williams gets to whack off watching this. Does that look fun? Oh, we didn't see the rocket land. Did you notice that? We didn't see it land, and we don't see like a, a bloody kid who lost his leg screaming or a mom just wailing in pain of seeing her child die. We don't see that. We just see the rocket and the cool lights, and then we're back to some people and technology and lights and lasers and fun. Ooh, handshakes. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. I'm guided by the beauty. Uh, Raytheon cut this together, by the way. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. And no one came on MSNBC and went, hey, Brian Williams, are you sadistic, sick? What's wrong with you? Because we sanitize it. No one sees the rockets land. No one sees the destruction. Oh, technology, we diversity, are one team. creating trusted, innovative solutions to make the world a safer place. No, we're making the world worse. This is not a safer place. Um, and they are beautiful pictures, beautiful of, uh, of fearsome armaments making what is for them a brief flight over to this airfield. Mission success is confirmed. Mission success is confirmed. Dead civilians. It's just to protect oil. This is this is why Americans have no idea. When I was a stand-up comic doing comedy shows in Afghanistan, 04, 06, and 07, I'd come back and people go, we still got people in Afghanistan? We're still over there? Or I'd say, yeah, I was just in Afghanistan. They go, wow, that's amazing. You went to Iraq. I'm like, two different countries, two different theaters of war, two different things. We're sanitized to it. We had no draft. We had no, nothing. There was no like, got to curb back spending, you know, save your, your tin and your victory gardens, all these things we had to do during World War II. Every young man had to join the war effort in World War II. And women went to factories. 
Now it's just video game success. We did it. We're winners. I'm guided by the beauty of our rockets. The proven Block 4 weapon system with an advanced suite of sensor technologies, data link, and multi-effect warhead make Raytheon's Tomahawk Block 4 a true multi-mission capable weapon of choice. Multi-mission capable. I don't even, this is just sanitized corpus speak. So guys, anytime you're wondering why I don't have free health care, why there's, we don't put the homeless, why your the park where your kids play at is run down. We could be spending it on all these things. New computers for the school, job training, Americans getting good union paying jobs in the Green New Deal. Nope. Nope. Mission capable, blah, blah, blah. So some rich asshole can profit it. We were warned about this. By Eisenhower. I come ago. to you with a message of leave taking and farewell. This speech did not get very much attention. When a new president is coming to power, as John Kennedy was, the spotlight was not on Dwight Eisenhower. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. There was a feeling at the time that this must have been written by some speechwriter who just sneaked into the speech. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. Three months ago, uh, we got contacted by a family up in Minnesota saying that we have documents from Malcolm Moose. He was responsible in, in part for drafting the military industrial complex speech. These new papers give us written evidence that this was not just some caprice of Eisenhower's or something by some speech writer. You see the evolution of his speech from, from May 1959 to uh, 1961. And he wanted to give this speech for a long time, two years. Our military organization today bears little relation to that known of any of my predecessors in peacetime, or indeed by the fighting men of World War II or Korea. There was one person in Dwight Eisenhower's life whom he really confided almost everything to, and that was his brother Milton. There's one particular document where the speechwriters had already drafted their version of the speech, only to see uh, Milton come along and totally revamp had already been, been written. When Milton Eisenhower was uh, taking notes and writing things on the drafts of these speeches, the speechwriters knew that it wasn't Milton talking, it was Ike. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. He would say, the disastrous rise of misplaced power. That's what Eisenhower was talking about. And this is where we are now. He warned us about the military industrial complex 60 years ago. It's here. Endless war. Trillions of dollars is wasted. These two utterly corrupt political parties and all of the media that's in favor of this war, war, war. Follow the money, connect the dots, get the truth. Thanks for watching, everybody. Shave your knuckles for justice. Hey, everybody, Ron Placone and I had to cancel all of our October tour dates because of uh, COVID, the Delta variant, all that. But we still have shows in California. Ron and I are doing San Francisco, September 11th, Sacramento, September 12th, Burbank, September 15th. And Lee Camp and I are doing live government secrets September 18th in Los Angeles. All those tour dates are at GrahamElwood.com. All of the venues are requiring proof of vaccination Dynasty typewriter on the 18th is also saying you can do negative COVID tests, but check with the venues for what their policies are. I have no control over those policies. Go to GrahamElwood.com. Sorry we can't come. This sucks. We'll be back hopefully next year. But if you're in California or want to make the trip, come out to these shows. These are probably the only shows we're going to do this year. Thank you.